starting a new federal job, but don't know much about the process? Well, this is what we'll be discussing in this video. Hello, today I'm going to be talking about starting your career as a federal government employee. Uh, basically, your first 60 to 90 days or even your first year as a federal employee. I know I remember when I started off as a federal employee a decade ago, um, there weren't much information out there about how to start off uh, a federal career and what you should do. And I made a lot of mistakes. And I want to put this information out there so that other people won't be making the same mistakes that I did. So the thing that's most important about this video is that people get information that they really need and that they onboard and that they come online uh, with, with minimal um, anxiety, I would say, because the, the whole process is very, very stressful, or at least it was when I, when I first started off. It, it was a real stressful process. And if you ever dealt with the federal government in any way, there's a lot of uh, policy. There's a lot of bureaucracy that's involved with anything that deals with the federal government. It doesn't matter which branch or, or service or which type of organization you're associated with. And that's the main difference between the federal government uh, career field and that of the private sector and one of the differences that you have to keep in mind when you enter into working for the federal government i work for the department of the army right now i also have worked for uh the uh, department of the navy in the past and between those two both of them are dod organizations but between those two organizations there was a vast amount of difference between the two of them so um, you have to remember that each organization is different, but at the same time, I have found some commonalities in what you have to do to get started in the federal government and the process of getting started in a new federal government agency. So those are the things that I'm going to talk about today in this video. Whatever the organization that you're working with, or whatever the agency that you're working with, these tips will provide you some sort of uh, guidelines that will help you get started with working for the federal government and really start off in a very positive fashion. So let's get into these tips and uh, let's get into this video. So tip number one, we're going to start off where I made my biggest mistake. There's a little known secret that when you enter into the federal government uh, service, you can negotiate your pay and your vacation day. Both of those items can be negotiated, but they have to be negotiated before you accept the offer letter. So let me go into a little more detail on that. In the GS pay scale system, which goes from GS1 to GS15, there's a designated pay amount for each level of the GS pay scale. So if you're a GS9, there's a pay range for GS9. GS10, there's a pay range for GS10. There are steps within that pay range. So you can be a GS9, uh, step one, step two, step three, step four. Now, if you're hired on as a GS11, you can't negotiate to be a GS12 to be a, a whole nother pay range, but you can accept or negotiate for a higher step. In most cases, the federal government will try to put you in at the lowest step when they hire you on. So you, they'll hire you as a, 
uh, GS11 step one. But you can negotiate and say, I believe I should be a GS11 step five or, or step six or step 10 because these steps go from step one all the way up to step 10. And the differences between these steps can be hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Well, the first tip I'll give you on how to negotiate these steps is to talk to the HR and let them know where your credentials exceed the standard. If the job has a certain level of requirements or, or a certain uh, level of knowledge, skills, and abilities, and you exceed that amount, you can tell them, you know, hey, I exceed the, the knowledge, skill, and ability requirements here. The next thing that you can uh, use to boost your uh, step increase is if you have a security clearance. If you already have a pre-existing security clearance that they can just pull off the shelf, then that's saving the government hundreds of thousands of dollars in most cases. So you can use that as a, as a factor in uh, negotiating steps. The next thing that you can look at is the salary bonuses and benefits of your current job. You can say, on my current job, I'm receiving these salaries, these benefits, and uh, these types of bonuses. I should be allotted this level of uh, step increase to compensate me for the loss of those bonuses or benefits. You can negotiate in that manner. Now, in cases where the HR uh, isn't willing to negotiate with you, go to the hiring manager. Go to the person that's actually hiring you for the job. They may be willing to step up and talk to the uh, HR and negotiate for you and see if they could get you uh, more step increases or also uh, more vacation days. So there are ways to negotiate these things and to get higher step increases and to get more vacation days. Okay, the next tip that we're going to talk about is understanding employment terms. And understanding employment terms is very important. Uh, I can't stress how much this, how important this is. Understanding the employment terms will let you know who, when, where, and how things occur within your career and what you can do to affect your career and your benefits and even can affect your possibilities and your chances for advancement within your career field. So these tips are very important. The very first thing that you want to do or the very first thing that you want to look at when you're starting your new job is understand your probationary period. The probationary period is very important. You want to understand the ins and out of your probationary period. You want to know when it starts, when it ends, who has input on your probationary period, and most importantly, how can a person submit anything derogatory toward your probationary period and basically end your probationary period? The next thing is performance reviews or performance appraisals. You want to know how your performance appraisals will be conducted. Now, in the federal system, there are several different systems for conducting uh, performance uh, appraisals. So each agency or, or each uh, department will have its own uh, a, a performance appraisal system. So whatever that system is, you want to know the ins and outs of that particular system. You want to know um, how often these performance appraisals occur, what is the rating scheme, who is your rater, who is your senior rater, um, uh, how, what is the point scale on it, you know, 
And most importantly, um, how do you get to meet the expectation, get a satisfactory or exceed the expectations? Um, knowing that will make sh will guarantee that you meet the expectations and have a good rating every time you are rated. Uh, not knowing the details of that, you may end up in a situation where you may not know or you may um, not meet your particular rating uh, requirements because you just didn't know that uh, what exactly it is that you were rated on or exactly how you were rated. So though that is very important. The next thing is understanding your sick and annual leave policy for your organization. Every organization will have uh, its own sick leave and um, annual leave policy, how it's taken, how you request it, um, when it's taken, and all of those things. So you want to know or find out how that process works as soon as possible. Another thing to consider is flexible work schedules. Some organizations offer flexible work schedules. Some organizations just have flexible work schedules due to certain environmental uh, conditions that uh, affect the organization, be it traffic or weather or whatever the external condition is. They, they may have flexible work schedules that will affect your schedule, or they may have a system where you can request flexible work schedules. There's also uh, some terms where you can uh, request flexible work schedules for uh, disabilities and things of that nature. So you want to talk about the flexible work schedules and find out if you require a flexible work schedule or if the, if the organization offer flexible work schedules. Finally, I want to talk about telework eligibility. In your job announcement, it will say if you are telework eligible, but sometimes in your offer letter, due to the mission requirements of your position, that may change and they may uh, put you in a telework eligible status. So you want to talk to your HR and to your uh, supervisor to find out if your position has telework eligible status. One of the first things that you need to do when you start a job with a government agency is to make sure that you find a good mentor within that agency. Someone that can give you some advice about the organization, someone that can uh, give you some guidelines and some rules and help you navigate the, uh, the ins and out of the uh, organization bureaucracy and the political structure within the organization. Sometimes that mentor can be your you're someone within your department, or it can be someone that's outside of your department. Um, but it typically should be someone that's been in the organization for a while and someone that's senior to you. Now, as you've probably heard me say in some of my other videos, there are several types of mentors. There are peer mentors that will help you navigate the lay of the land and will help you in process and will introduce you to everyone within the organization and things of that nature. Um, and there's also career mentors. And these are the mentors that I'm talking about. Career mentors are mentors that are senior to you, mentors that are uh, have more uh, knowledge about the organization, more knowledge about the career field, and these mentors can provide you information, valuable information that can help you navigate the political structure and the uh, operational structure within the organization. So those are my tips for helping new federal employees within their first uh, days and months of gaining federal employment and starting off on the right foot.
For more content, please like and subscribe, and I'll continue to produce more content in the future. So until next time, please remember to uh, continue to do great things, and we'll see you on the next video.